Hi, I'm Aaron Goulding, and that's Joe Foster. Today we're here with Sean Friedman. He's hanging out with us today, and we're going to talk about um, Sean, actually. Sean used to uh, work for Fearless uh, Records and Revelation Records, and I just wanted uh, to introduce him today and have you guys get to know him a little bit better. Sean's going to be uh, showing up periodically with us on the show here. He's going to help. Uh, introduce some new bands to you and we'll also do some flashbacks with him at some point down the road with some further in some further episodes so uh, anyway Sean thanks for joining us thank you for having me yeah totally so tell us about what would be the 90s when you were uh, with Fearless actually uh, Aaron that was early uh, 2000s oh was Plus, it 2000s yeah why did I think it was the 90s Reb was first was no I worked at Fearless Records uh, around 2002 I was with them for six and a half years uh but graham would throw a bitch fit whenever i would go on tour with my band so i left them for rev because jordan would allow me to tour or take as much time off as i want uh for tour because he understood that you know working in the music industry most of us play in bands who tour what's wrong um, with you graham gosh fucking graham oh, anyways. Um, yeah so touring was fun did that for about three years and then got out of the music industry when it started getting fucked and changing got it what are you doing to unfuck it at the moment? <laughs> I mean, I, and that's why you're here, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I mean, you know, most bands don't really need a record label nowadays with the uh, everything being digital. Um, so you know, uh, do uh, crowdsourcing for funds, record yourself. Yeah. As long as you put it out to the masses on Spotify and stuff, people can still find your your albums. Yeah, the DIY stuff is real big right now. Yep. So everybody's kind of, you know, taking advantage of all those platforms, um, and it makes it a lot easier for bands to get their music out there. So I know that uh, we've that's kind of the way we've gone. Um, a lot of bands we've already talked about are DIY. We talked about Mute last time. They're all they've always been DIY. I think for the last fifteen years or something like that, twenty years. So. Totally get it. I would explain why neither of you have records. Oh my But there gosh. is on that side of the coin. I'm not trying to be a D, but a lot of us still enjoy vinyl. Hey, we, we have vinyl, buddy. We have vinyl. Tangible, collectible. Okay. Yeah, and so Sean, in? Sean was in a band too. Sean, tell us about the I band. I like share, show and tell. You can't find What band? So my last band was called Murder Majesty. It was when I was living in Las Vegas. Uh, we were more like ska punk kind of stuff. Bigger shows with suicidal tendencies, oh, cool. but then we would still play house shows with like leftover crack and subhumans and citizen fish stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, that's really really cool. And so I met you about what 15 years ago? Uh, about 15 years ago in the MySpace yeah. days before that's Facebook right. even MySpace. existed. That's right, MySpace. Yeah, and uh, we've kept in touch pretty much ever since then. You've kind of moved away and come back, moved away, come back, and now you're back in San Diego. And are you still involved with music? Um, not really. I'm old and have kids. I don't even really go to shows. Yeah. So I'm probably part of the problem why music has changed so much. Okay. Well, anyways, that that ends is this uh, end of segment. This. Done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> even when yeah. my little brother's band comes through, uh, honestly, I don't even really go see them. Sorry, Brent. Uh, yeah. But he's always on tour. My little brother's still heavily involved in music. Cool. Uh, tour managing. Yeah. Well, we can understand. I mean, we have families as well, Joe and I, and. And we, you know, it's difficult for I us to get out. I have a family as a result of touring. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I call my wife my tour <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wow. love it. Yeah. Uh, Blink-22 even played there a couple times, as well as the roller hockey rink, also in Huntington Beach, that I Ooh. played at that went to a couple shows. Yep, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Don't Some Glory, if you were into old propaganda, kind of how to clean everything-ish, uh, they were along those lines. Uh, here's a song from them. Check it out. Amazing. 
amazing, Sean. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Amazing. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. I and so, so Donuts and Glory, uh, tell us a little bit more about them. Are they on Fearless? No, they were not. They put out that one album and then a seven inch. Uh, this is their only full length. Cut. Called When Pregnosaurs Ruled the Earth on a small label uh, called Liberation Records. Hard to find or is it wow. repressed or? Um, no, they pressed it on LP and CD. Okay. I believe it goes for a lot on eBay, but that's pretty much your only way of finding it. Or Discogs. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can download it on there. May or may not be on Spotify, but if you look hard enough, I'm sure you can download it illegally as well, like I, I do with all my music. <laughs> I'll have to check that Again, out. Again, part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, uh, tell us about another band I know you wanted to share as well. Uh, so this is the band I've been listening to the most recently. Uh, they just put out a, their only album called Passenger. It's a band from Copenhagen called Fabled Mind. Uh, this is my favorite song on the album. It's also their uh, first song on the album. It's called Into the Unknown on what, Lockjaw what Records. Style? What style? Uh, I would say skate punk-ish, early okay. 90s, Epitaph Fat Records kind of stuff. And are they uh, still together? Yeah, they are, are still, still together. Are they still releasing albums and stuff and um, touring and all that? Yeah, to my knowledge they are. I mean, wow. they haven't been a band for very long, but uh, yeah. Are they cool. comparable to that? Famous uh, Swedish band Pride Bowl, would you say? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, these guys are a lot better, a little more tech. They I, can actually I, play their instruments. I assumed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> kind of like uh, a European. The Wilhelms. singer can probably actually sing, I bet, too. Yeah, he can sing great. Um, a okay. little more technical, probably uh, a Wilhelm Screamish, except oh, they. Oh, very good, very good. <clears throat> except they actually care about melodies as opposed to just trying to be as technical as possible, or technical as possible. Mm, cool. No offense to Wilhelm, I love them. I just feel like nowadays they're getting more into the tech aspect, and it seems like their leads are a little more important than the uh, the, the lyrical and the harmony aspect. But um, sure. check them out. The song's fucking awesome. The album just came out. Give it a look. Cool. Which song are we listening to again? Uh, the first song on the album called Into the Unknown. Oh, that's right. Into the Unknown. Not bad religion. All right, let's check it out. Really impressive, Sean. Amazing. Wow. So you can digest the melody within two seconds. Like, I think it's incredible. No, I mean, I just, it's like, it, it definitely sounds like 90s. I mean, you know, it's got that 90s little flair. You can, it's got that like European feel to it as well. Scandinavian ish, right? Yeah, I told you the singer can <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I know, I'm just like, wow. I'm like five copies, coffees deep and I'm a little jittery, so excuse me. But that's great, Sean. I'm so glad you were able to come on with us today and share <gasps> some music. And Joe's over there trying to build a tower. I was going to hide in the, house, in the box. Oh, he's embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. Okay. Well, Sean being here. <laughs> anyway, I mean, um, these guys are too pretty. I figured the emo haircut would work for this kind of episode. Well, Joe's got a sparkle on his face. So. I do. Yeah, you're sparkly. That's okay. It's I the like the glare. Man, I like the glare. Yeah, I was at a rave last night. I week. like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, did you want to share a couple bands with us today? Um, yeah. I mean, I think I mentioned it before. Race Fist from Sweden's got a new record out, which I never thought right. they would. I mean, they're so old school back in the day. Like, I remember uh, playing with them in, like, 1994, early 94, and over, like, 30 years later, and so I give a lot of respect to bands that are still together, still doing it. If I'm and, not mistaken, uh, the uh, production quality on this album is a lot better than the shit they released early on. Which I like the rawness of the, the early stuff, um, but this one is very slickly produced. Uh, there's a lot more guitar melody behind the screen. What is so funny? I want to look what at the that. fuck. I was going to make a Pride really? Bowl reference. You can't, dude. <laughs> no, no anyway, Pride Bowl references. Wiped, uh, white I want to look at the album. Just why are you being, why? What? Why are you not let sharing? How come you're not oh, sharing? Here. Thank you. Okay. Come on. Raise fist. Anthems. Amazing. Epic. Any song. Great. Melody, intensity. Wow, uh, these emotional guys. content. These guys are getting older. I feel like they were little kids when I saw them last. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at you. 30, you're at least 35, because you just said 30 just years ago. Pick, pick a song. <laughs> okay, song. All yeah, right. Go ahead. Pick one. You're all good. Okay, there's Venomous, there's enough I can just say it. Venomous, seventh, Anthem, Murder, Into This World. I like Anthem. Shadows, right Oblivion, Polarizer, we're here. You wanna listen to Anthem? Yep, it's the Anthem. 
It's a title track. Indeed. All right, let's listen to Anthem. Um, this is a brand new anthem coming your way. Burning out when this studio to make this play. You know how we do it. Put your fist in the sky if you love it. This starts today. We are coming with the sound of the kick drum leading the way. My heart is mine. That's heavy. That's production quality. It's pretty fucking awesome, man. It's real clean, like. Yeah, it could, I mean, it's polished, you know. This is Sven from Tausend Löwen unter Feinden, and you're watching Eye for an Eye. All right, this band's, uh, this is their <laughs> second full-length release. They're from Germany. Um, they're abbreviated TILA, but it stands for Tausend Löwen unter Feinden, which means uh, Heart of a Thousand Lions. And they're uh, one of the better up-and-coming German hardcore bands. Uh, a lot of melody in there, but in the sense of uh, Madball and some of the heavier stuff, you might... <laughs> What the fuck, dude? This gold vinyl that you're laughing at? No, that's that's oh. beautiful. I know. Well, my um, question is, do they speak English or German? They sing in German. Okay. Oh, nice. All the songs are in German, which I think is important because um, so many bands overseas, I don't know, have been brainwashed into thinking they need to speak in English. And I've done a lot of touring with bands that's not even their native tongue. and. I find it refreshing to hear a band speaking in their native tongue. Even if I can't understand it, I just I think the passion comes through more. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I listen to bands that well, don't speak they're, English. Yeah. They're yeah. singing in their own language. Yep. And so, uh, there's a song in here I wanted to play for you guys called Still Something or Other. I have my glasses on. You see something on here like Still Water or Still Well? Do you I, see? I let him translate yeah, to German, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, but that's you want me to read it? The song's not in yeah, German. Geez, what's wrong with I, you guys? Hey. Well, I mean, I still, give still is Hold on. Still is Wasser. There it is. Still stand. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, in English. Still stand. You're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, read that. It's Weichenwelt. Yeah. Pretty good. It's Weichenwelt. Uh, All right. But, uh, I took German lessons at Huber School a long time ago. Yeah, boy. Uh, this record is available through Rev HQ as an import. Um, it's also Ooh. out on my record label on uh, my French friends called Unity Worldwide Records. It's our release number eight. And um, it's available through Cortex Records in Berlin as well. Wow, that's amazing. You guys have put out eight albums already. We're actually on 11. Oh, shit. Okay. And, uh, I guess that just didn't remind It's just that a that amazing, <laughs> right? Okay. Still stand. Tausen moving into finding. Do it. In my It's totally German. I mean, like, wow. way to describe that, yeah. bud. No, yeah, I mean... Right, it's totally German. It is. I know. Completely. Because they're Germans. Okay. And they're I from Germany. Sense. I like they it. they're German. But the passion is there. Well, then, the passion is there. Yeah, like yeah. The, uh, the raw aspect of it. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's fantastic. The guys are just genuine guys. I mean... I've heard nothing but great things about them. Yeah, they bleed hardcore. I mean, they're blue-collar guys. They all have normal jobs. They're not, like, trying to be rock stars. I mean, they're good to everybody. So it's just, uh, it feels good to support a band like this, you know, yeah. that's in it for the right reasons. And uh, their follow-up full-length is amazing. So if you like that uh, melodic, kind of heavier, thicker sound of hardcore, but you don't like it, like, trying to be something that's not, like, produced because we want to be on the radio, this is... Sure. Produced for them, yeah. They, they love it. That's it. I love so. the album cover too. It's pretty killer. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah. yeah. What's up, guys? This is Mike Ladon from Chaser, and you're watching Eye for an Eye. I have a couple bands I want to talk about, uh, real quick, and then uh, I got more I'm bands. Gonna wrap it Am up. I done? Oh no, you have plenty more. I know. I can see the, right. the the tower you got going there. Um, anyway. The next band uh, I want to talk about is called Chaser. They're from Orange County, and they've actually been around for about the last almost 20 years. Um, they've kind of slowly made their way, like, in a big way into the scene. Um, I know they've got a huge following, uh, especially in California, but they're throughout the United States, Canada, um, uh, other countries as well. 
Um, yeah, but I believe their most recent album was actually on Effervescence. Uh, it was. European label. Yep, Ever, Ever, Effervescence Records, Sound, Sound the Sirens. That was their 2018 release. Um, there's a song on there I really like. It's called The Show. We're going to listen to that listen to that in a second um i think it took them eight years to release their first full-length album but they finally did um after they you know formed or whatever so uh i want you guys to check this song out these guys are definitely making some headway throughout the world and getting some recognition hope you like it well i've been saving all the money not trying to get away to salty job where it stresses not dead in pr bay because i've been waiting so long to sing my kids away and be a punk and traveling like it's war tour 98 So take me to the show, but we can of our own And even if I'm going sad, I won't be there alone Cause punk is here to stay, this is my family With all the bands and all the friends I made along the way And we will stay this way Alright, hey, I'm with uh, Mike Ledon from Chaser uh, Mike, so you just had a sick set tonight here at Brick by Brick in San Diego. Thanks, man. And um, I just wanted to know, like, so where are you guys headed? What's the ne- what's the next plan? We got a few shows, uh, really cool shows coming up in uh, Southern California, and then um, we're gonna hit the studio and record our next full album. Epic. We've been very fortunate. We've been able to travel the world, and we've hit. Um, European countries. Uh, we've been to Central Europe. There's two bands in particular. There's CF98 and there's uh, 4MI. Um, they're both from Central Europe. One's from Poland and one's from the, the Netherlands. And they're both female fronted bands and they are so freaking rad. The world should know about them. So I recommend you check them out. Um, all I can say is they both came out with new records this, this last year. Okay. Um, awesome. And they released on Soundspeed Records, uh, Chris Manning. Okay. Chris with the K, a longtime friend of ours, um, put out both their last albums, and they're just both phenomenal, phenomenal artists and great records. Awesome. So the whole thing. All together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mike, for uh, taking the time to uh, do this with us and talk about these awesome female fronted bands. Looking forward to uh, promoting these on future episodes, and we'll reach out to them as well and um, see if we can't get some sound bites from them. So, uh, oh, epic show. Love you Chaser, too. man. Thank you guys you, killed it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shout out to Wanda Lang. Oh, yeah. You know, Wanda like Lang. John. <laughs> John DeLong. Soon to be uh, from uh, Quebec, French uh, Canadian. Yeah, that's right. He's going to be a Frenchman. Nice. No, He's going to have to learn the ways of the French. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. See you out there. So here I am. Next band I'd like to talk about is called Belvedere. Uh, these guys are amazing, man. They're out of Calgary, uh, Alberta. Um, they've got a uh, their latest release was the Revenge of the Fifth, and there's a killer song on there. It's actually the first one on their uh, album called Shipwreck. They've got kind of a '90s punk rock sound. I I hear like the singer has like little hints of like Greg Graffin kind of, but then he goes off into like a little more screamier like uh voice it sounds it's sounds great i mean it's super catchy super easy to get into his um, vocals sound very much to me like uh, 
old uh, Scott Radinsky. Uh, yeah, ten foot right. pulley. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, you're right. Definitely. It's got that. I don't know. It's just it's pretty cool. These guys are pretty amazing. Um, they've got sounds like you know they've got some families and stuff. They've been touring for about the past twenty years. Um, and I've seen them a couple times. They've been in the states, uh, I believe, three or four times. Yeah, I even oh, have a awesome. tattoo of them on my arm. Oh no way! Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so if you get a chance, check these guys out. Right now, we're going to listen to this uh, song called Shipwreck. I'm sure I didn't know the sensations. It must have slipped by in my distractions. But did the proof of purchase supersede the voyage? Why do we glorify the That's all I got today. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, guys. Of course. I appreciate it. All right, yeah, Sean. Thanks for coming down. We're stoked to have you, man. So Sean's going to be joining us uh, in future episodes um, as well, and so we look forward to having him on. Um, I don't know. I kind of wanted to uh, end with a little uh, story. You got a story for us? Anybody got a story? I went to the Judd show last week. Oh, boy. Let's hear how that went. Well, I don't remember coming home from the judge <laughs> show. <laughs> so, no, it it like doesn't really have an ending. Oh, boy. But, okay. uh, Are they still straight edge after all this time? I, not even. Kind of like Civ? <laughs> I'm just going to say, I don't know. Giving out a gr- or That's it was, good. I believe, green answer. liquor at their uh, first I, reunion show, I if I'm not mistaken. Know. I'm sure Mike is, but uh, I, I, have, I really have no idea. But you know, they play at? Uh, they played at this new... Uh, place in Garden Grove where my buddy Chris Lisk is putting on shows. Cool. It's called uh, The Locker and then there's another place over there I think called the Garden Grove Amphitheater. So there's two venues now like next month or, or I'm sorry in January February they're having Black Flag. They've already had Suicidal. They do a lot cool. of hardcore shows. Awesome. Gor- Gorilla Biscuits, Youth of the Day. Like, so it's been a great place and uh, they were amazing as usual. Who did they play with? Uh, Remember? actually played with Berthold City. Oh, no way. Which I missed. Oh, man. I yeah. wish I... Gosh. I, all I can review about the show was Judge was great. It was okay. good seeing old okay. friends. And then I woke up in my bed and I was in my bed. <laughs> oh, <house. So>. my <laughs> gosh. Anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I shouldn't have brought that um, up. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Hey, real quick. Um, well, we've all been there. But um, wanted to also mention one last thing. Um... Uh, satanic surfers we, you and I were talking about this the other day satanic surfers is actually going to do a tour they haven't toured in a long time they're going to tour no fun at all through yep. Europe right 25th anniversary this uh, summer is it this summer or is it coming up it's coming up yeah, um, satanic surfers uh, hero of our time and no fun at all is doing out of bounds uh, that's their entire set uh, first track to last so cool yeah awesome so anyway I just want to throw that out there if you guys are no fun at all fans satanic surfers fans, I am. keep an eye out Check so if out. anyone wants to buy me a ticket out to uh, Europe, I'd love to go. Yeah. In other uh, words, in other words, give me money, <laughs> give me gold. Yeah. Please. All right. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, hey, thanks for watching Eye for an Eye. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. Uh, click the link at the end, and also you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Feel free to share your music with us at eyeforneyepunk at gmail.com. Have a great day. Peace. <laughs>